Today we are going to discuss about design of retaining wall. We are concentrating on design of reinforced concrete retaining wall today. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to do the design of retaining wall by yourself. Let's go through the procedures you need to follow. In a design of a retaining wall, there are two requirements. You have to check the stability, you have to design for the ultimate limit state. Under stability limit state, you can design you have to design for overturning, sliding, and bearing. Under ultimate limit state, you have to check the reinforcement for bending and shear. Let's start with the stability design of the retaining wall. Under this, we have to check the overturning, sliding, and bearing. Let's start with the overturning check. Now, if you take a retaining wall like this, as you I, I have drawn here. Having a height edge, this retaining wall having the height edge, and we can consider the width of the retaining wall as a as b, and also we consider one meter thickness in designing of this retaining wall because we assume this is the same section continue in this retaining wall, so one meter thickness we can consider for the design. Also, in this design, we have not considered the water pressure. If you have the water pressure, you have to consider that also, depending on the height of the water table. So, for example, if the water table height is like this, and then you have to consider the water pressure into the retaining wall. This will be gamma W into H, that particular height. And in this section, we have to consider the gamma D for the soil. and this section that is within the water table you have to consider gamma dash right so gamma dash is saturated density gamma set minus gamma w this is gamma w is water density gamma set is saturated density of the soil so we have, we have that we have to consider during the design but in this example for simplicity we are not going to go with that we consider a retainable design without water. So if you don't have water, then you can calculate the pressure under the footing as Ka gamma H. So here Ke is the active pressure coefficient that can be take calculated from 1 minus sin phi divided by 1 plus sin phi. From this equation you can find the Ke. Gamma W is gamma dry gamma d that is kind of a data you have to consider during the design that is soil property h is the height of the retaining wall so you can convert the gamma h into ka so if you know the gamma h into ka you can calculate the horizontal force that is applied on this retaining wall that is the overturning force so that can calculate as we have shown here right here ka gamma h is the total pressure into the 0.5 into h is the total force so you know the total force now with that you can calculate the overturning moment, moment also in addition since we now want to calculate the restoring moment we have to consider the weight of the wall there are two walls so this is the weight of the vertical wall this is the weight, weight of the base and in addition to that you have to consider the weight of the soil in this retaining wall because there is a soil here that you can consider for the stability of retaining wall design weight of this portion is considered as w3 so let's calculate the overturning moment we take a moment about this point mo overturning moment we are going to take mo equals f1 into h by 3 now you know the height this is a one third height of the dash triangle. This height is gender should be one third of the height h by 3. Then f into h by 3 is the overturning moment. Restoring moment also we have to calculate. Now we have three forces w1, w2, and w3. Say each force we have a l1, l1, and l2, and l3. Then with that you can calculate the restoring moment. So we can calculate the weight of the for example, weight of the wall W, say if it's if, if this wall fits is like this, 
So say this is A width of the wall, say this is H, then weight of the wall will be A into H into 24 or 25. This is the density of the concrete, this is the weight of the wall. Similarly, you can calculate the other weights in the base also and also soil fill also you can calculate gamma D into the area. That particular area because we consider 1 meter length. So with that you can calculate the W, W3 also. So similarly you can calculate the restoring moment. Once you calculate the restoring moment, you have to check the factor of safety. What is the factor of safety? Factor of safety is the moment resistance divided by the moment over turning. So ratio of width in these two is considered as the factor of safety and also it should be greater than 1.5 generally but this may vary depending on that particular project or that particular specification but usually it is considered as 1.5 if it is greater than 1.5 our stability against overturning is acceptable let's see how we can check the sliding of the retaining wall in this retaining wall we have a horizontal force of F1 we, as we calculated previously that is Ka gamma H this force we have already calculated previously in this retaining wall we have a horizontal force of Ka gamma H into H2 this is we have previously calculated so in the sliding you have the base now we have to consider the friction of the base if you don't have a shear keys, now in return over we generally sometimes provide the shear keys to enhance the sliding resistance. So there will be, this is called the shear key, then there will be a passive pressure develop in this shear key when you have a horizontal force like this. You can have a shear key or else you have to consider the base resistance for the design. Now if you don't have a shear key, you have to consider the base force resistance only. This is friction so friction in the soil and the concrete that has to be considered here the friction can be calculated as r into tan phi r is the total vertical load on the base that is w1 plus w2 into w3 w1 and w2 we have shown here that is from the weight of the wall and the weight of the soil so the tan phi phi here is the friction angle in between soil and the concrete that has to be obtained from the laboratory testing so if you know the five you can calculate the fr so if you know the fr and f1 then you can check the factor of safety factor of safety is equal fr divided by f1 that is rest resistance divided by the applied force that generally should be greater than 1.5 so this also has to be come from that particular specification or design requirement so then we we'll consider a factor of safety 1.54 sliding in a retaining wall now let's see how to check the bearing of the retaining wall that is the last check we have to check on the stability now in this example as we discussed previously also we can we have considered a one meter width of the retaining wall Assuming this retaining wall continue, so in this retaining wall we have the width one meter and the uh, base length or base width one meter and the longitudinal direction we have considered as a one meter. So let's see what are the forces. Now we have uh, two forces F in the horizontal direction and W in the vertical direction. These are the two forces generate the stress under the base. W is the vertical weight of the retaining walls, so we know how to calculate the W. We discussed this previously also. W is W1 plus W2 plus W3. These are we have already know. So we can calculate the stress under the base. Stress say sigma V equal W divided by the base area. We have considered one meter length, and the width of the base is V is b so the sigma v we can calculate from this equation we have to consider the 
uh, stress due to the overturning moment. The, the famous equation m over i is equal to sigma over y we can use. From this we can write the sigma is equal as m over y m into y divided by i. So sigma m is the stress or at the base due to the overturning moment. M is the overturning moment. Y now y is the distance to the half of distance. This since we are considering the base, now uh, we have to get this value. Now we are considering the base like this. This is a one meter. This is b. So y is b by two, right? In this base, we are going to find the stresses. We have the moment like this. M O. So we are going to calculate the y. Y is b by two. I is twelve into twelve divided by one over twelve into one is the b. Width of the that section is one and height of the section is b h by three. From this we can get this value six m over b squared as the stress due to the overturning. So the pressure under the base can be written as sigma v plus or minus m because this this is stress have a rotation. Pressure under the base can be written as sigma v plus or minus sigma m. Right. Let's draw the stress variation in the base. So let's consider the retain wall base as like this. This is the wall and this is the base. Under the base we have a vertical stress. Sigma v like this in the downward direction and stress under the base due to the bending moment we have sigma m this say minus and this if you say this plus whatever uh, this if you this is considered as compression is minus then so it will be like this then if you have to if you add this if if sigma v greater than sigma m then there will be a uh, sign like this so the i consider the magnitude magnitude wise if it is greater there will be a minus value like this sigma m so the maximum stress will be the sigma s yes, this 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 also sigma v this will be added together this will be uh, sigma max and this is two direction this is uh, say this is minus this is plus this all together if you add it if this uh, sigma v is greater as a minus value, then sigma will be like this. So the most important thing here you have to keep in mind sigma max. Sigma max should be less than the allowable bearing capacity that you have to check. In addition to that, you have to be concentrating on if if, if it is goes minus like this, that you have to consider in the design also. So most important is sigma max that maximum stress should be less than the allowable bearing capacity. That is the bearing check under the body. Next we are going to see how to calculate the ultimate bending moment shear forces and the reinforcement requirements. As we discussed previously also we have a horizontal force F in the horizontal direction. So with that we can calculate the bending moment at this Point. that will be the bending moment that's at this point the bending moment will be maximum so we can assume this uh, retaining wall as a free cantilever and we can calculate the maximum bending moment m max as f into h by 3 because this distance to the force is h by 3 as we discussed previously with that we can calculate the maximum bending moment the bending moment at the board will be very like this it won't be a linear function it could be a curved function like this and the maximum bending moment at the base you can calculate there will be similar bending moment at the base also m max will be the same so you know the bending moment in the wall now so with that you can calculate the reinforcement area depending on your standard from this you can calculate the as that has you have to follow the your relevant standard so shear force also you can calculate similarly so you have the force f in the horizontal direction on the wall so force is divided by the area v into 1, 1 meter section v v considered and the width of the wall is a. So this is a, a into 1 meter we have considered. So the stress you can consider a into 1 
f divided by a into 1 is the stress so you can calculate the shear stress so if you, if your shear stress less than vc or the shear capacity you don't want to provide the shear reinforcement otherwise you have to provide the shear reinforcement but you have to keep in mind this there are different different procedures in different standard to check the shear capacity and check whether the requirement of shear links that you have to follow the relevant standard in checking the shear stresses so basically you can calculate you can follow the procedure in calculating the shear stress and calculating the bending moment. If you know the shear force and if you know the shear stress and the bending moment from that, you can calculate the reinforcement area and shear link requirement if you are going to provide the shear links, or otherwise, you have to modify the reinforcement arrangement over the section thicknesses to avoid the shear reinforcement in the section. With that, we end today's discussion on design of retaining wall. I hope that it will be it was a useful lesson to you. If you have any question, you can write them. Let's meet again from the video. Thank you very much for watching our videos.